Hello and welcome to Fully Charged. Now, I'm currently in the centre of Milton Keynes, in fact, at the MK Centre, the big shopping centre right in the middle of Milton Keynes. And uh, in many ways, uh, Milton Keynes is the Norway of the United Kingdom, the highest number of electric car chargers anywhere in the country, really concentrated in Milton Keynes, highest penetration of electric vehicles in, in, the, in the country, uh, quite a high awareness of the electric vehicle future that we're all looking at. Um, but still an enormous amount of people, uh, a number of people who really don't know that much about electric cars. And I'm visiting a place today that's just opened that is really amazing. It's not a sales room. It's not a branded, you know, buy this car or that car. It's a kind of education center. It's an information center. You can come in here without any pressure to buy anything or do anything. You can have a go in electric cars. You can have a look at them. You can talk to people who actually know what it's like to live with and drive electric cars. So David, to start with, congratulations on achieving this because it is really, really impressive. But we think it's an interesting concept because yeah. We, we really just want to take away some of the myths that there are still floating around, that electric cars are slow, they haven't got the range, they're expensive, and uh, as you know, you know, a lot of these things are actually a, a history now. Yeah, so exactly, yeah. So, I mean, I think it, it, what I feel always is that the, 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 the general press and the general sort of public attitude is about five years behind what's going on now, you know, it's a, it's a bit dated. So the idea then is, you, you, if, you're in, if you're shopping in Milton Keynes and you walk past here, I mean, some 20-odd thousand people come to Milton Keynes Regional Shopping Centre every year. Right. So we're right in the heart of it. Uh, we're a 4,000 square feet facility where we've got a whole range of EVs on display. Right. So uh, Joe Public, if they're walking past, going to Marks and Spencers or John Lewis or whatever, they see, OK, what's this with a load of cars? They come in, uh, invited in, we try to make it welcoming. It's bright, airy, looks like an Apple store. Um, and we've got... 10 trained what we call EV gurus, right. we've really gone into depth with them to train them on actually not only each of the models but actually explain to people what driving an EV is all about. Right. What we do is we have a fleet of 53 cars that are available to lend to people so if you come in here you can go out for a quick test drive for 20 minutes around the block with one of the gurus. If you still show interest we offer people a loan car for a nominal charge, you know, 75 quid, say, for a week. So they can borrow a car. As I say, we've got 53 cars we can lend people. And then if, once they're, you know, enthusiastic about it, we pass them on to the local car dealer. Right. And we've got relationships with local BMW, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Renault dealers, and so on. Um, and it's a pretty warm lead at that yeah, stage yeah. because often they'll have been given better information than they would have done if they well, walked the straight into the dealership. Yeah, that's very true. I liken this EV experience centre to perhaps if you imagine what cars were like a hundred years ago where only the select few people could afford cars and it was a very new experience, the whole idea of owning a motor car and living with your own personal transport. This is kind of what we're seeing but for EVs. So you walk in, you've got lots of different chargers to show you what they're like at home, what they're like as public chargers. All the cars in the showroom are plug-ins, are the hybrids like that GTE or like this, like the e-Golf. Um, but like I've said before, there's normally other manufacturers. This is a brand neutral shop. You can't actually buy cars here. It's all about educating people to what plug-ins are like and what it would be like to live with them on a normal basis. See, the likes of you and I are familiar with all this stuff. We know what charges are like. It's not like news to us, but it's news to a lot of people who drive normal cars. It's like an introduction to like what your next car is going to be. And if you're currently driving a normal petrol or a normal diesel, your next car is hopefully going to be plug-in in some way, be that hybrid or be that full electric. It's quite interesting to see what people, how people are reacting and they're poking around the cars and nosing and normally this has got a VW in it, might have a Nissan in it, might have a Renault in it. There's six brands I think in total who are affiliated with this particular experience centre. Don't forget, it's probably Tesla that came up with this idea of not having conventional car dealerships, of putting themselves in a normal shopping environment and therefore kind of making the whole car buying experience very different. It's the same as going and buying clothes. 
So Tom, you're with these guys, Charge Master. I am, yeah, Charge Master. And the reason why you're here in Milton Keynes in this shopping centre is because this is a, a, a venture with Charge Master, right? Sure. So the, the Experience Centre was a, a joint initiative between Charge Master and Milton Keynes Council. So we were asked to come up with an idea to pitch to government effectively for their funding that would be a bit more interesting than just asking for, for funding for infrastructure yep. and really help to drive the EV agenda. So our idea was all around trying EVs out, experiencing whether it's for a test drive or for a week at home, uh, and just, just trying them and seeing how they fit into your lifestyle. The team here are, uh, are sort of independent. They're EV gurus, we call them, but they're independent, impartial. So they will talk about all of the brands um, that, that make EVs. They'll talk about all the different types, all the different sort of ways you can charge, et cetera, uh, and just give that sort of impartial view to the, to the con consumer. But let's get back to this. Obviously, uh, fully charged viewers know exactly what this is. Uh, they're familiar with the Charge Master ch public charge points here. But you guys have got some interesting stats that you've been collecting, haven't sure. you? Yeah, so we make uh, the most charge points in the UK. Uh, they're all made in the UK, so um, has the helpful bonus of being below planning permission height as well. So it's got an attractive unit. It was designed by an award-winning uh, UK industrial design company. So we run the Polar Network. Uh, there's around 5,500 sort of sockets on that network for people to charge from. Um, and the, the best way to access it is through a very simple RFID card. So you tap in, and we can put it on your key ring. You tap in on the RFID. It connects to the charge point, opens the socket for you and you can connect in and plug in and charge and it, it, you get a full statement of all your usage um, and get sort of invoiced every month. Uh, as someone that has a plug-in and a full EV and, and also non-electric car, people's argument for like not wanting to be attracted to EVs is the complexity of how many cards do you need for different providers and it's a bit of a boggle. I think for, for the most part, I mean, the reason we, we've obviously gone to the RFID and put it on a key ring is so it's, you know, it gets away from the argument about another card in the wallet. You've got to have your keys on you when you've got a car. Yeah. Um, I think the, the benefit of an RFID is also that our charge points work off a, a GPRS signal, so you don't need 3G. Okay. Obviously, if you haven't got any 3G on your phone and you're standing next to a charge point you otherwise could be using, that's quite frustrating. Yeah. So we really sort of want to make it easy for people to use. Um, and the universality of the charge points, as you've seen on these, it's just a Type 2 socket. And that's what the vast majority of the public infrastructure is, the Type 2 public cable that you'd need to connect to your car, yep. whether you've got a Type 1 or a Type 2 connector on the car. Uh, and on the rapid charging infrastructure, you know, you use what you need. So there's three, three types available now, rapid chargers. You know what fits your car, so you know, you're not going to plug a, a CHAdeMO into a CCS socket and vice versa. So as long as you know what works with your car, it's a bit like petrol at the petrol station. Yeah, you've, got, you know, you've got kind of unleaded, super unleaded, diesel and super diesel, if you like, and it's yep. the same process. As long as you know what goes in your car, you're fine. You just get into the habit of Absolutely, doing it. Yeah. And what stats, what kind of uh, behaviour have you guys accumulated over the last few years? What we see is a huge bias towards home charging, which isn't surprising, it's what we all expected. Um, there's around a 10 to 1 ratio of home charging to public charging. So 10 to 1? 10 to 1 roughly, right, yeah. Okay. Um, and it's sometimes higher than that on a sort of monthly or weekly basis. So um, in terms of how that translates from charging sessions, that is, to actual energy consumption, it's around sort of a 3 to 1 ratio of energy consumption. So a lot of the time people are at home, they're actually only topping up because they haven't used that many miles, but they're just plugging in because it's habitual at home. So yeah. we're finding people tend to be plugging in once every other night at home on average. Yeah. So that's obviously some people might be plugging in every night, some people might only be plugging in once a week. Uh, and on the public network, people are plugging in about six times. So about six, six charges a month is about average we're finding on our network. Okay. Um, usually taking about roughly about 150 kilowatt hours from their home, their domestic supply, and about 50 kilowatt hours from the public supply. Um, what we're seeing is that sort of decline of the three kilowatt charger as sort of batteries become larger, seven kilowatt chargers are becoming the new standard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're seeing rapids creep in. They're about 15% of the network at the moment in, in, the, in the UK. And we think that's probably going to sort of maintain around that level. We don't think rapid chargers will suddenly be 50% of the UK network. We think rapid chargers will probably stay at about 15, 20%. 15%. Of the overall UK charging yeah. mix, that's right. Yeah. With the majority being posts like this. So these will be in places like hotels, shopping centres, car parks, etc., where people yep. are going to be sat for a few hours maybe and just plugging in and sort of what people are increasingly calling grazing when they're charging. So it's almost yeah. sort of a, a slower charge rather than needing to, to rapid charge. Um, we're definitely seeing that kind of growth in the public network usage overall. So if you rewind even a year ago, the actual use of our public network has, has doubled. So the number of charging sessions in a month has doubled since last August. Has it really? So doubled. So huge, huge increase in the public charging use, obviously with the wow. growth of the EVs. Uh, in the UK on the roads. I know that I um, was looking at the stats um, of the amount of public charges that you guys have got from 2012 when the Olympics yeah. were on till now and it's gone from was it 3,000 ish? So yeah so the overall UK mix is about 3,000 charging points in 2012 so when the Olympics was on and it's now just about 14,000 uh, in terms of sockets yeah and we think it's probably going to grow to about 100,000 potentially uh, by 2022 
uh, within another five years. And we think that at that point, we'll probably have around about a million plug-in cars on UK roads, potentially as many as 1.4 if things really, if things really take point, off. One point, really? Wow, okay. So, so 14,000 public charge points to 100,000. Potentially around that number, yeah. It's quite, quite realistic. Yeah, um, to a million plug-in cars. Yeah. And obviously at the moment, we also don't include in that figure when we talk about public charging networks, all of the home charging networks that's available. So yeah. you know, there's at least, um, from our calculation, 75,000 home charging points um, that have been installed across the UK. And that's the really important sort of point part of the EV story is that you, know, you can't, you know, unless you've got some very special supply at home, you can't fill up with petrol or diesel at home, you can very easily fill up with electricity. Electricity, ele it's electricity. It's everywhere, it's abundant. Yeah. You know, there's yeah. 17 charging points in this room. In terms of London, the rapid charging network we're rolling out, obviously we're on the, the TFL framework for the rapid charge in London that will be supporting things like the new electric taxis that are coming in, the new black cabs, but we'll be rolling out those rapid chargers and, uh, and the ones in London will all have contactless payment as well. So it's a good example of where we're going with that technology in terms of them being available to our, our Polar Network members who yeah. have got a Polar Plus RFID card, but also be available on contactless. So people who are driving around London will have those rapid chargers available to them as well. So like me, for example, who is an EV driver, but I don't drive in London that much, my own yep. car. Uh, is it like now when I go on the London Tube and I just flash my credit exactly card? Right. Right, I don't have an Oyster because I yep. don't really need it. I could be able to do the same thing. Yeah, on those London rapid charges, exactly right, yeah. Hooray! Convenience. And obviously all because it's the Polar Network, it's all 100% uh, renewable energy powered as well. So our entire network's been um, certified by Avo Energy to be 100% renewable. So all of our energy we use on the public network, people can be assured obviously that they're getting a, a renewable supply at the back end. Well, thank you, Tom. No problem. It's been good to chat. Thanks so much. Right. Cheers. Cheers. So what you can see behind me are some of the range of cars that you can uh, do test drives in here in Milton Keynes. They've got just about every electric car available. There's more arriving all the time. Eventually, in a, in a year or so's time, they'll have 99 different cars, different, not 99 different ones, 99 cars on in their fleet for you to have test drives in. It's such a brilliant system. We're just outside the store and look at all that. Loads of charge points. Welcome to the future. Welcome to Milton Keynes. It's funny how the traditional dealership is not enough anymore. How basically what we're going to be doing, and what we're seeing is people wanting to, to browse cars first on the internet with online configurators and then in a shop environment with a family that's not like the hard sell situation. Remember, this is not a shop. This is an experience center for the new breed of electric cars. And in the case of VWs, what you're looking at there, it's kind of the last of the conventional really. The ID range in 2020 is when it's going to get really interesting and properly visually futuristic. The future's quite bright. I need some slippers, so I'm just going to pop in and get some moccasins, all right? <laughs>